All right, well last week we left off, or two weeks ago we left off with um, uh, speaking about the Jesus generation and what occurred during those time periods and what God is doing now. But I want to bring a contrast now because we're politically, we've been talking about the um, Occupy movement and what's been going on. And many in the press have been making it seem as though it's the biggest thing since sliced bread and you know we're making changes but it has nothing to do with what was going on with the uprisings of the 60s and 70s because in Berkeley for example you had well over 4,000 that went up to 40,000 young people up there protesting for change, free speech, the war in Vietnam, Jane Fonda was leading a group of, 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 of students in using the seven words that you can't use with, that were banned by the FCC. There were a lot of curse words and, and things that you couldn't say on the air. And she was getting the crowd riled up. But to parallel that, what was going on at the same time, there was this vast emptiness inside of our youth because they had been trying free love, drugs, everything, and there was still that vacuum on the inside, which created a huge hunger. And so when Jesus showed up through the men and women of God who were expressing his not just salvation, but the power of God in demonstration, they began to flock towards these meetings. Berkeley was one of the first places where by the thousands, these, these, these protesters, these hippies, these young people that, had, that could see what was wrong with the world without any power to change it, began to flock to Jesus Christ. Whereas the Occupy movement, they get 400 people and they say, we've got success. They come to LA, a couple thousand that show up to support the three or 400 that are there camping out. And it's different because back then there were people that, that, that while they did not look like they were people who were intelligent, they were college students that knew their past and knew where they wanted to go in their future. And today, you get the interviews and all they, all they say is it's costing too much to go to college, they're going to start charging us five dollars at the ATM, and what are we doing in the Middle East? And the 99 percent, there's one percent that's wealthy in the 99 percent, but they forget that the 99 percent also contains middle, middle, middle income people and that it's just a small percentage of people who are protesting and they really don't have a substance. There might be the leaders that have the substance, but the rest that are there don't, in mass. And I really believe that if God is going to do something with this generation, we've got to begin to, I, I believe that there's an uneasiness, there's an unrest that's going on on the inside of many of our young people. And it's going to go from that to the realization of the emptiness that they have in their hearts. Because it's not going to be found in, in, in video games, it's not going to be found on the internet, it's not going to be found in the social networks, it's not going to be found in, 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 the, in the political realm, and, and they're going to realize that there's still an emptiness on the inside. But the Church of Jesus Christ, I believe, for so long has been busy with the social network, has been busy with the video games, has been busy protesting in reaction, not in response to, always coming in last rather than being in first because not having the ear of God because I believe that as a whole not I'm not talking about pockets I hear people say we're in revival but it's just there whereas the Jesus movement caught you can every city has its story you hear the story of what happened in Tulsa in Kentucky in Asbury in New York City it was these fires that began to catch not just here but all over the world and it was young people in mass who began to who were attracted to the things of God and so right now I do believe that there are people say well it's come you got you got Bethel you've got uh, Florida you've got Atlanta you've got a few cities but it's not catching you know and so uh, and, and I'm not saying that in a negative sense because there's people that will take from there and try to create something. But you can't create hunger. Hunger has to exist. Or at least the contrast 
The power of God has to be in demonstration that, would, that, that follows the word of God that goes forth. And so I believe that in this time period, God wants to do something with, with people who are in their, in their 50s, the, if you will, the, the Joshua's and Caleb's. God wants to raise them up. It's their time. And it's like Hannah, who was ready to give birth and had wanted a child for so long and was the ridicule of the ages because the other wife had a child and would tease her even though her husband would give Hannah if you will the, the, the good stuff and, and make her feel loved but there was no child but at the same time you had Eli who was diminishing in health and his kids were violating every one of God's temple laws and rules and the presence of God was no longer abiding and so at the same time, God needed his man, and Hannah needed her son. And so we're in this place right now where the church of Jesus Christ needs the presence of God to come in and lead. Just as it did in the days when they crossed the Jordan, the presence of God led the people into the promised land. Many times we drum it up through um, gain, and prosperity does not equal God's blessing or God's proof of blessing upon a, upon a, a people. Because we, we know and the psalmist always cried out about and lamented, why do the wicked prosper? There were times and seasons in people's lives when, when, when things would occur. And so I think that we're at that place right now where God is moving in the lives of his people. And... I think that the hunger is occurring in the people who are hearing the remnant of the body, who are hearing and are readying themselves for what God wants to do. Because we also have to be ready to put the nets out. Because see, we can't get weary like Peter did when he was putting the nets out and caught, didn't catch anything all night. But when Jesus showed up, he told him, cast out again, and then put the nets out on the right side. And they were so full, they could hardly contain them. And I think we're in that, in that little pocket of time where God is about to do greater than what he has done in, the his, in, in, in all of the historic revivals and awakenings combined because I believe we're coming up into the we're just in the beginnings of a third awakening and this world needs an awakening to God our nation needs an awakening to God because we've gotten away from the principles that have made this nation great and we're going the other way right now you, it's not a man that's going to bring about a change. It's an awakening to God. It's an awakening to His precepts and what He's done. Revival is something that can sustain a society. It can sustain a community, can sustain a society, and can spread nationwide because Jesus said that we're to create or we're to bring about followers, disciples. But see, if we're not followers or disciples ourselves, we can never say, do what we do. Because many have confused knowledge with the Word of God with intimacy and we can't do that anymore because all we're doing is teaching the people to be teachable and out of that spring up more teachers to teach people to be teachable but we don't train them to be followers and Jesus said to train them that they may be observers of the law of God and so how many are willing and are hungry enough to follow in intimacy to follow and hear the voice of God so that we can become all that He wants us to be. Just a thought. Just leave it right there. And, and, and see what we come up with in a couple weeks.